Amazon is facing accusations of boosting cancel culture and censoring conservative views. Two GOP congressmen are now asking the tech giant to hand over data about the alleged offenses. Gun laws could be changing soon. The House passed two bills yesterday that would tighten up rules on background checks for gun sales, and the Senate is likely to take up the bill soon. Several dozen children rescued after a month-long operation in Texas. A local police chief saying these kids represent some of the most vulnerable populations. Tune into Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. Those stimulus checks could arrive as early as this weekend. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki told reporters on Thursday people could be seeing those direct deposits soon. President Joe Biden signed a $1.9 trillion stimulus package into law yesterday. Saki went on to say more than 158 million households should expect to receive them, adding these are just the first wave and that payments to eligible Americans will continue throughout the course of the next several weeks. Other than the stimulus payments, tens of billions of dollars are being doled out to the state, local and tribal governments. The bill also will continue the expanded unemployment benefits for several more months and will expand the child credit for a year. Republican Senator Ron Johnson previously noted this relief is not free, saying $1.9 trillion in additional debt is $5,800 per person. Added to the $4 trillion of earlier relief bills, it's a debt burden of $18,000 per person. He made the clerks read the whole bill out loud before the Senate voted on it. All 600-plus pages of the bill took more than 10 and a half hours, until just after 2 o'clock last Friday morning. Johnson says so often they push these massive bills that no one has time to read. Another change under this bill is the expansion of child tax credit. Previously under the law, this child tax credit comes with a work requirement. But Biden's bill gets rid of that. Even families who don't work could get up to $3,600 per child on top of any other aid they already might be receiving, such as food stamps, Medicaid, and so on. All taxpayer families earning under $200,000 can claim the full credit. Senior Research Fellow of Domestic Policy Studies at the Heritage Foundation, Robert Rector, says this child tax credit program will cost the country nearly $80 billion a year and about another $40 billion in tax reduction. He writes that the real issue in welfare is it discourages people from working. This is also a reversal of welfare reform from the 1990s. That bipartisan reform found that broken marriages and extensive dependence on welfare harm society. Rector notes that reform saw a massive decrease in dependence on welfare and at the same time increased employment, which led to a never-before-seen drop in child poverty, especially notable among black children. He is concerned this could lead to universal basic income, which would harm rather than help society. And top Republican Representative Liz Cheney says the result will be tax increases for the middle class. The Biden administration has signaled it could introduce gradual tax increases to help pay for the stimulus. That includes raising the federal corporate tax rate at 28 percent, up from 21 percent. And now the conservative-leaning tax foundation says Biden's tax proposal would raise the U.S. federal state combined tax rate to over 32 percent. That would make it the highest among G7 nations. The tax foundation says Biden's tax hike would reduce long-term economic output, eliminate about 160,000 jobs, and reduce wages. And Politico reports that hidden in the stimulus bill is a $60 billion tax hike on wealthy and big corporations. Three main areas will be affected. Publicly traded companies paying top employees over a million dollars will have deductions taken away now. Another affects how multinational corporations do their taxes. And a third will affect how unincorporated business owners account for their losses. And in other big news, Biden says all American adults will be eligible for the vaccine by May 1st. Thursday's announcement is Biden's first primetime address to the nation. It marked a year since the WHO announced the pandemic. Biden urges everyone to get the vaccine. He says, quote, if we all do this, if we do our part, if we do this together by July the 4th, there's a good chance you, your families and friends will be able to get together in your backyard or in your neighborhood and have a cookout or a barbecue and celebrate Independence Day. 
That doesn't mean large events with lots of people together, but it does mean small groups will be able to get together. This week, Biden directed the government to order more doses. It'll deliver vaccines to hundreds of more community health centers and double the number of participating pharmacies. Biden says they'll organize tools by May 1st to make it easier to get the vaccine. That includes a website, tech teams to help states with their websites, and a phone hotline. This week, a health official said over 90 million Americans have received at least one dose, and over 30 million are fully vaccinated. The CDC says vaccinated grandparents can now visit and hug their grandchildren without wearing a mask in most cases. Now, let's move to Congress. Gun laws could be changing soon. The House passed two bills yesterday that would tighten up rules on background checks for gun sales, and the Senate is likely to take up the bill soon. One of the two gun bills would require all gun buyers to go through a background check when purchasing through a private dealer or owner. The measure known as H.R. 8 would give authorities 10 business days for federal background checks to be completed before a gun sale can be licensed. The companion bill is titled the Bipartisan Background Checks Act of 2021. It passed 227 to 203. Eight Republicans voted for the gun reform bill, while one Democrat representative, Jared Golden from Maine, voted against it. Five Republicans co-sponsored the bill, along with several Democrats. The bill states the purpose of this act is to utilize the current background checks process in the United States to ensure individuals prohibited from gun possession are not able to obtain firearms. Currently, any firearm purchased at a retail store or online has to go through a background check and has to involve a licensed firearms dealer with a federal firearms license, known as an FFL. Specifically, H.R. 8 would also require background checks for private sales. Bill supporters say this will make communities safe by making it less likely for guns to get into the hands of criminals. But critics say most criminals do not acquire their firearms legally, so expanding background check legislation would do little to curb gun violence. House Judiciary Committee Chair Jerry Nadler says there is no reason to continue to make it easy for people who are legally prohibited from possessing firearms to acquire them. And the evidence clearly shows that background checks work and significantly curb gun violence. And studies show that universal background checks have very little effect on crime or suicide rates. Representative Dan Crenshaw said in 2019, before voting on the bill for the first time, all of the tragedies we've seen, whether it's Parkland or Sutherland Springs, or the Thousand Oaks tragedy or Sandy Hook, none of those would have been prevented by H.R. 8, adding, so we have to ask ourselves the question, if we are going to infringe on people's liberties, what are we doing it for? It's not going to do any good if it's not going to actually prevent tragedies. Why are we infringing on people's liberties? The National Rifle Association said in a 2019 analysis that if the bill passes, it would require that loans, gifts, and sales of firearms be processed by a gun store. The same fees, paperwork, and permanent record keeping apply as to buying a new gun from the store. If you loan a gun to a friend without going to the gun store, the penalty is the same as for knowingly selling a gun to a convicted violent felon. Likewise, when the friend returns the gun, another trip to the gun store is necessary, upon paying a felony. But some Republicans are concerned that expanding background checks is a backdoor way to create a national registry of gun owners. And just hours after these bills passed in the House, Democrats introduced another gun bill. It would ban over 200 models of semi-automatic firearms and magazines holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition. Now let's turn to big tech. Two GOP congressmen blame Amazon for boosting cancel culture and censoring conservative views. They are now asking the tech giants to hand over data about the alleged offenses. In a letter to Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, Congressman Jim Jordan and Ken Buck said Amazon plays a leading role in silencing conservatives. They wrote, Big Tech, including Amazon, is engaged in systematic viewpoint-based discrimination. In the unfortunate phenomenon of cancel culture, Amazon plays a leading role in silencing and censoring the political speech of conservative Americans. Adding, in just the last several months, Amazon has exhibited a pattern of curtailing, censoring, and removing from its platforms content that espouses conservative viewpoints. They requested documents and information from the company about its censoring activities. 
Jordan is the top Republican on the House Judiciary Committee, while Buck is the top Republican on the House Judiciary Subcommittee on Antitrust. In the letter, they listed several of Amazon's alleged editorial decisions. Choices, they say, give the appearance of a coordinated effort to cancel conservative speech on the company's platforms. In one instance, Amazon refused to allow advertising for a book that was critical of transgender ideology. In another, Amazon's Kindle ebook platform refused to publish a booklet challenging certain views on the effectiveness of the pandemic driven lockdowns. The tech company also permanently banned then President Trump from its video streaming service Twitch and later deplatformed Twitter competitor Parler, a platform popular with conservatives. Jordan and Buck are asking the company to produce documents on seven alleged cases of censorship against conservative viewpoints by March 25th. Amazon and Bezos did not immediately respond to an email request for comment. And now for some good news. Over in Texas, 31 missing children now rescued and reunited. The month-long operation had a happy ending. Seven children rescued from sex trafficking and the other 24 reunited with their legal guardians. It was a joint effort. The U.S. Marshal Service and Homeland Security Investigations had help from the police departments of Arlington, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Grand Prairie. The acting U.S. Marshal said in a statement, to observe law enforcement partnerships and community concerns culminate into such a successful recovery outcome is rewarding. Adding victims should know they are not forgotten. There is hope and a way to return home. Dallas Police Chief Eddie Garcia says it is our hope that each of them will be able to put this traumatic experience behind them and move forward to have a happy and productive life. According to the National Crime Information Center, more than 346,000 missing children reports were recorded in 2020. Federal officials say children who go missing include those who were abducted by a relative or non-family perpetrator, those who ran away, and those who got lost. Arlington Chief of Police Al Jones says these kids and teens represent some of our most vulnerable populations, where adults try to prey on their innocence. We will not rest until every child is located safe and someone is held accountable. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and have a wonderful weekend.